Hi and welcome back to Walkman Phones. I'm Paul and today we have with us the Sony Xperia XA. It's finally in the house. Um, it just launched in the US last week and I just had it come in um, and we're going to take a look at it today. This is Sony's uh, lower shelf from the X range uh, with the Xperia X and the Xperia X Performance uh, sitting above it. But this is the phone that kind of has piqued everybody's interest uh, based on its design and uh, build and just kind of, you know, it doesn't seem like quite the same Sony phone that they've been making over the last few years. That was kind of the knock that uh, the Xperia X and X Performance were getting was that it looked too much like it was from the Z range. And uh, this one, while it's lower spec, um, kind of breaks a little bit of new ground for Sony. Um, so we're going to take a look at it. Uh, first, we got the box here. Just real simplistic, uh, you know, packaging. They didn't really do too much with it. Uh, the back, it just kind of, see if we can focus in there. So you can see the, pe the specs aren't very uh, high end. You know, 13 megapixel camera on the back, 8 megapixel on the front. It is a MediaTek processor and only has 16 gigabytes of storage. So yeah, that's gonna be interesting <laughs> in 2016. So anyways, let's get this open and let's see what we're dealing with here. Excuse me while I cut the sides. So, first and foremost, get the phone, and I went ahead and got the graphite gray. Uh, it also comes in a white and a lime green, which I wasn't bold enough to go for. Um, it's been a while since I've had just a black phone, or you know, in this case, gray, but. I feel like Sony does a really good job with them and they look very good. So uh, we'll take this out real quick. This is the Xperia XA. And as you can see, what they did with it that makes it interesting is, and we'll see it more when I turn on the screen, but there's very little bezel on the side. It's almost non-existent. It's an edge to edge display. And it, it, the glass curves into the the metal on the sides. So it's a very sleek, you know, futuristic look that they didn't incorporate into the X or the X performance for whatever reason. Um, I think I remember saying something from them that said, oh, well, we had the fingerprint scanner on the X performance and the X, so we couldn't make the, the bezel-less design. And, you know, I, I don't know. It, that could be the case, um, you know. I wasn't crazy about the fingerprint scanner on the Xperia Z5 when I had it, so the fact that I'm missing it doesn't really bother me so much. Um, you know, for a design that's this nice, I'll you know I can pass on the fingerprint scanner. It's okay. Um, so yeah, so we got our power button there. That's the uh, I guess at this point you can call it the uh, old school Sony power button. Uh, that circular design that they had on their Z range uh, from the early days. Um, I have one on my Xperia Z tablet. Uh, it's really nice, you know, a nice little design to it. Uh, below it has the volume rocker and with all Sony phones you get your shutter button for the camera, which is kind of nice. I never really use it too much, but it's still nice. Then along the back, we have the uh, instructions for the SIM card. I don't think I'm going to try to go through the SIM card setup. I don't want this video to be forever long, and uh, that's just not important for you guys to see me try to put the SIM card in. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, so let's just set this aside for a second. We'll come back to it, and let's see what else they gave us in the box. I'm sure it's pretty, pretty bare bones. Yep. 
pretty bare bones. Uh, so we have our micro USB charging cord. No USB-C to be found here, but it's not found on the higher end ones either. So we're not missing anything there. And the uh, wall charger. Okay. And yeah, that's pretty much it. They didn't even give us headphones. So um, that's fine. You know, I recently bought a pair of, you know, Sony earbuds from I think Walgreens or something for like $10 and I really like them so I was planning on using those anyway so it doesn't really bother me too much um, but yeah let's just give this a quick boot and we'll see what we're looking at here like I said I'm not going to bother with the sim card right now it's a little too complicated so we'll turn this on All right, just a little bit. Yep, there we go. Powered by Android. That's the new boot screen that all the Android phones have to do. And Google told them they wanted to see that. And, you know, I guess that makes sense. You know, a little bit of branding for them. Apologize for the lighting. The lighting's not very good in here, and I'm trying, but I do not have a professional setup. <laughs> Just kind of flying by the seat of my pants here. Um, so yes, I am aware of the important information. Let's get started. Okay. SIM card for now and let me sign into the Wi-Fi network real quick okay it's just gonna take a little bit to get in there um, my first thoughts on the phone it's really nice it's um this phone reminds me a lot of the Galaxy Alpha, which I had a couple years ago. Um, that was, I'd say it was Samsung's first attempt at making a nice uh, premium phone. It had the uh, really thin, thin profile, uh, the metal band around it, like this has. Um, but yeah, it was like a really nice in-hand feel and really thin and easy to use and easy to pocket. Um, you know, battery life wasn't the greatest on it, but as with most of these little fashion phones, that's not really their prime objective. Um, you know, I, I personally think that they were just going for a certain look here and this was not meant to be a powerhouse phone whatsoever. And, um, I knew that going in, so I'm okay with it. I've read a few things online about this phone, some of the reviews, and, and you know, it's getting trashed a little bit, you know, the, the design is very nice and everything, but I, I think people are trying to hold this, this phone to a certain standard that, um, I'm not sure if it's necessarily fair. Um, I think people give Sony a hard time because their, their phones are a little bit more on the expensive side and they don't, um. necessarily always come with the highest end specs you know the x performance um, only came with three gigs of ram instead of four so everybody was screaming about that and um you know there was no fingerprint scanner in either the x or the x performance in the united states which i could see people being upset about actually because um <laughs> when you pay that much money for it you, you should have the fingerprint scanner on the lower end, you don't mind that it's not there because you're not paying that much for it, but. Um, OK, 
Okay, so we should be just about in here. A good old setup process. We'll try to skip through as many things as we can here. But as you can see while we're booting up, um, very thin profile. It's only 7.9 millimeters thin. Um, it has a speaker up top uh, for your phone calls. Oh, we're having problems with the Google servers. Hooray. Uh, the bottom has the micro USB charging ports and also a speaker. That's the one speaker on the phone. And as you said on the side, there's the power button, volume up and down, the camera button, and on the side here, there's a flap. And inside that flap is the SIM card and micro SD, expandable storage. So that's there, so there's a plus there. Seems like most manufacturers are trying to go back to that um, after jumping off of that for a little bit. Let's skip that. Okay, so we're in <laughs> after all that. Sorry about that. The setup process always takes more longer than you expect it to. Um, so yeah, this is the Xperia UI. Um, they have always left things pretty clean. Um, back since the days when they had the Timescape UI, um, that they only added a couple things for like social networking and you know, they had like a little like a scroll, kind of like a, a picture album that you could scroll through all your different tweets or your Facebook posts and stuff. I actually kind of miss that. I wish they would bring that back, but they've gone the way of, of being more uh, bare bones and stock now. So, you know, can't fault them there. That's always a good thing. Um, all they do is they, you know, with Sony, I always tell people, you know, it's, it's pretty much a standard experience, um, you know, stock Android. The only thing Sony tends to do is just you know, add little flourishes here and there to make it kind of look pretty. Um, you know, great looking wallpapers. They finally changed all the icons here. The icons were terrible for a while, I, I, I will admit. Um, I think they didn't have any changes to them since about 2011, maybe 2010. Yeah, so I mean, the, the icons needed to, to have something done. So um, you just kind of scroll through. Uh, there's a simple weather widget, which is really nice. I've always been a big fan of Sony's weather widget. It kind of pops down and gives you the weather, um, you know, little animations. Uh, basically, go in here. There's your app drawer. They've done away with the side um, where you can go in and kind of like, now the search is up top. Before it was you, you swiped all the way to the left and then it would come up. Um, but here they just kind of give you some suggested apps along with Sony's What's New. Um, and then everything else in here is, is pretty standard issue. I mean, there's a couple, I don't know if you call it, you, yeah, we'll call them bloatware apps. You know, they got the Amazon shopping and, you know, AVG protection. You know, nobody's going to use that or shouldn't use that. Um, but other than that, not too bad. Um, we go in here, let's just see, I know what we're running on, but just to show you, we are running, let's go, let's see where the settings are at, sorry, a little lost. I've been using the iPhone SE lately, so my mind is kind of like iOS right now. Uh, here we go. It's great to have another Sony phone back in, in my possession, though. I've always been a really big fan of theirs, and um, 
you know they make beautiful phones so um, this one was a decent decent price you know it was only it was under 300 bucks you know we're talking like 275 so I figured for this design you really couldn't go wrong you know just to have another Android uh, phone in the house so yeah we're run on Android 6.0.0 Marshmallow. So, we'll see when it gets nougat. I'm sure it will. Um, I'm not going to hold my breath for it to show up anytime soon. Um, neither should anybody else. Um, you buy the phone for the operating system that it has at the moment, not for the one that you think is coming. And that's a great tip to have with Android. Um, because things ebb and flow and you never really know when an update is going to get pushed and um, a lot of people have a lot of anger over these types of things I've never really cared that much a lot of I mean I still have my experience tablet Z is still running on jelly bean because I like the way that the on-screen buttons are set up in the corner you know and I know that if I update it'll change that so you know your mileage may vary but that's just something you know good to think about um, on your way in getting an Android phone so yeah, basically that's it. Uh, we've run a little long on this video. Sorry about the uh, startup time for the uh, setup process. But yeah, really nothing in the box. You know, if you're going to grab this, you're going to want to have your own headphones. Most people do already. And, you know, the ones that come in the box, they aren't very good anyways. And the, the ones that came with the Z5 weren't very good. So you're not really missing much there. They gave you a charger and you have your phone. And that's pretty much it. So I'm going to be playing with this over the next couple weeks and um and come back and give some of my thoughts on it and just kind of where i think it stands and uh yeah so this has been the unboxing of the sony xperia xa and i'll talk to you next time all right bye